Well, good morning. And welcome to Mount Hebron Presbyterian Church. Whether you are with us in person or joining us online, we are deeply thankful to have you with us today. Uh, we have a whole long list of announcements found on the last page of your bulletin, so I would invite you to take some time to read through those. Uh, but this morning, I did want to highlight just a few. We had announced earlier this week uh, that we were going to have a youth picnic, um, but given the shifting weather and some of our team chaperone is now unavailable and others of us are still battling an upper respiratory infection, um, we have decided to uh, reschedule that for another Sunday this summer. Have no fear, we will gather out at Centennial Park um, in just a few weeks. Uh, the, our book club is going to be meeting on Tuesday night, uh, this time for a movie. Uh, they will be watching the Disney movie Encanto, and if you've never seen it, it is a lovely film. Um, so hope that you will consider joining, uh, but please do RSVP with Judy as we know that spots are uh, um, limited. Uh, you may have seen the announcement that we will celebrate uh, the life of Gladys Hemphill, one of our founding members of Mount Hebron Presbyterian Church, on Wednesday, May 24th. The memorial service will be at 10 a.m. Uh, with a reception in Hebron House to follow. We would invite our community to come and be a part of this service. Uh, we also would be grateful if you might be willing to bring a dish for the reception. Please reach out to Susan uh, if you might be willing to do that. Uh, we were, are asking for all graduates, if you are graduating from high school, college, or from a graduate degree, uh, please let the front office or me know um, as we will be celebrating our graduates in worship uh, later this uh, month. As always, uh, the same announcements continue, so please do read through all those. Or oh, actually, we do want to highlight Shady Maple. Uh, we are going on a field trip to Shady Maple. Would you want to say anything about that? I know you mentioned it last week, but it would be great to hear a little bit more. Shady Maple is l the largest smorgasbord in the United States. Um, it is a Mennonite operation. It's been around for decades. And it's a tie-in to our card ministry, which uses um, the resources of the Mennonite community and their home building expertise to rebuild homes, mostly in Louisiana and the South after hurricanes. So I thought we could, as we enjoy our card ministry reach out fellowship, we could enjoy some delightful home cooked Mennonite food. I confess I've been there more times than I have fingers <laughs> um, because when I lived in Philadelphia, we just did it as a big group and as a family. And um, if you would like to experience something you will never see again, please consider it. It's going to be fun. Lovely. And thank you so much for organizing this for us. Are there any other announcements for the community this morning? Um, since this is a communion Sunday, uh, we are going to take a moment to ask for any prayer requests. Um, how can we pray for you this day? Are there any prayers among us? Shelly. And if you'll, um, Alan, give her the microphone. My um, Aunt Lynn, who I thought was the healthiest person on either side of my family, very abruptly had to have open heart surgery and a triple bypass mm. on Wednesday. Mm. She is recovering. Uh, she was great to the surgery. She was a perfect candidate, mm. minus the fact she needed it. And um, my cousin is going to be with her for the next month. So also, please, prayers for my cousin Catherine as a caregiver. Thank you. We do. We pray for Lynn and we pray for your family. Thank you, Shelley. Are there other prayers among us? Um, good morning. Um, prayers for our niece, Jackie. Um, we've been asking for prayers for her all along through her pregnancy. Um, and um, at this point, things are, she's being monitored very closely. Her blood pressure's um, rising again, as it always has in pregnancy. Um, just prayers that um, God's will, whether the baby needs to come now, um, or whether she can hold on a little longer, but just God's touch on her. Thank so you. Can get through this pregnancy. We continue to pray for her. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Albert. I uh, just have a prayer concern for um, my uh, a colleague's son, Patrick. Uh, he had jaw reconstructive surgery uh, a week and a half ago, I think. Uh, he's in recovery, uh, 
Surgery went well, but the recovery time is six to eight weeks, and it took seven hours for them to basically break apart his jaw and uh, put it back into place. So mm. he's in a lot of pain now. He's able to eat soft foods, but that's really it. Mm. Um, so yeah, please uh, keep him in your purse. Thank you, Albert. We pray for Patrick and his recovery. Are there other prayers among us? I would also lift up prayers for Rhonda's daughter, Becky, Rhonda and David's daughter. Um, she is about 33 weeks, almost, uh, 33 weeks, almost 34 weeks. Um, she did develop preeclampsia, um, and so they will be inducing her um, likely today or early this week. So we pray for Rhonda, for David, for Becky, and for Ember. Are there any other prayers for the community? Trusting in the eternal presence of God, let us open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits as we come before God in worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Look up and see the heavens open to us. Sense the mystery of God's presence with us. It is our custom to gather that God may uplift us. God is our refuge in whom we trust. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Celebrate the good news. Christ is risen. We will not fear losses or suffering. We are raised with Christ to new life. Come to Christ the living stone rejected by many. Come to Christ, chosen by God and precious to us. We rejoice in God's steadfast love. We are grateful for God's faithfulness that redeems us. God, you are the source of our life. Gather us now, we pray. Form us into a holy community, your own people, molding us by the breath of your Holy Spirit and revealing in this corporate body the face of your anointed Christ. Amen. Please join in hymn 624.
You may be seated. Hear this call to confession. Friends, settle into your skin. Quiet your heart. Open your hands and receive the grace of God as we offer our prayers of confession. I invite you to read along in silence as I read the words of our prayer out loud. O oh God, gather me now to be with you as you are with me. Soothe my tiredness, quiet my fretfulness, curb my aimlessness, relieve my compulsiveness. Let me be easy for a moment. O oh Lord, release me from the fears and guilts which grip me so tightly, from the expectations and opinions which I so tightly grip that I may be open to receiving what you give, to risking something genuinely new, to learning something refreshingly different. Oh God, gather me to be with you as you are with me. Forgive me for claiming so much for myself that I leave no room for gratitude, for confusing exercises and self-importance with acceptance of self-worth, for competing against the others so insidiously that I stifle celebrating them and receiving your blessing through their gifts. Oh God, gather me to be with you as you are with me. Keep me in touch with myself, with my needs, my anxieties, my angers, my pains, my corruptions, that I may claim them as my own rather than blame them on someone else. O oh Lord, deepen my wounds into wisdom, shape my weaknesses into compassion, gentle my envy into enjoyment, my fear into trust, my guilt into honesty, my accusing fingers into hands that reach out. O oh God, gather me to be with you as you are with me. Amen. And hear this assurance of pardon. Siblings in Christ, receive the grace of God. In Christ, we are held in the eternal light of forgiveness. Amen. Trusting in the abiding presence of God, we are filled with Christ's peace. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please take this moment to look around and greet one another with signs of peace. The peace of Christ. Peace of Christ.
And I now would like to invite our children to come down for our time with all God's children. I'm not sure if Ellie's coming in or not with Angel. Play a little music just to give them a chance to think about it. If not, we'll do it. Yeah. wonder do you know what this is if you had to guess minus pastor amy's terrible art skills what do you think this is right here it's a compass you are amazing that's right north south west and east and what does a cute what does a compass do i'm down come on down it helps you track the the what the way that oh, it helps you track the way. Can we give a little snap clap for that? That's exactly what it does. Same, same, same. You say that too. Well, let's see if we can track our way. We're going to do some directions. I'm going to point. And if I say north, you're going to stand up. If I say south, you're going to sit down. If I say east, you're going to turn. And if I say west, you're going to turn. Okay, can we do that? Everybody up, everybody up. All right, and if you're already standing, then maybe you jump if you're already standing. How about that? Ready? North, south, north, west. Oh, that was slide to the left, slide to the right. I like just cross. That was good. West, east, south, north, north, north. I, if I had been really good, I would have programmed that whole thing to the cha cha slide because that was awesome go ahead have a seat that's really really good so you're right the compass helps us to show the way and it shows us what to do based on the direction so if we need to go north we know where to go south west and east today in our bible story jesus says i am the oh that's beautiful actually gee he does but jesus also says I am the way. I loved that language that you used because Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Meaning if you need to know what to do, you follow Jesus. I'm going to put a little J in here. There we go. You follow Jesus because Je it does look like a flower. That's Sometimes there is a flower in the compass. You're right. That's beautiful. So if we have Jesus as our little compass inside, then wherever we know we need to go, we listen to Jesus and we live as Jesus showed us to. And maybe if we do that, then we might also be a little bit of a compass to others because they will want to go in the direction we're going in if they're able to see that we are faithfully listening and following Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for being our compass. Thank you for being our compass. Thank you for sending us Jesus to show us the way, show us the truth, the truth, and the life. And all God's children said, Amen. And you may now follow Miss Susan out to Sunday school. Thank you so much and great job today. Thank you.
Please listen to this prayer of illumination. Lord, as we listen to your holy word, open our hearts to the power of your spirit. Call us out of darkness and lead us into your marvelous light. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Psalm 31, which is found on page 439 of your pew Bibles. Psalm 31, a Psalm of David, we will read the first five verses and then verses 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And verses 15 and 16. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson this morning is a part of a larger portion of scripture in John's gospel, which we refer to as the farewell discourse. It's that time in which Jesus is starting to prepare his disciples that he will soon not be with them. As we are in this season of resurrection, after Jesus has risen from the grave, I wonder what we might hear in these words from Jesus as he prepares his disciples for that time. Let us open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits as we listen to the word of God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you know me, you will know my Father also. And now on you, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip? And still... You do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works I do. And in fact, will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
And if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few months ago, a few of our leaders at Mount Hebron Presbyterian Church attended a trust seminar designed by Holy Cow Consulting, intended for leaders of churches seeking to foster an environment of trust. This seminar drew us into some really hard questions about trust. Trust when it is at its best, and trust when it is broken. And our text this morning from John's Gospel draws us into this very same place of reflection. So I'm going to open us in the same way this seminar did by first asking us to all come into the space together. I know our minds tend to wander. We've all come from different corners of our day. Perhaps you roll your shoulders. Maybe you take a deep breath and release, but I invite you to close your eyes. And as you do, I invite you to call into your mind a person for whom you trust. Maybe it's someone right now, or maybe it's somebody of your past, but somebody who you trust implicitly, without reservation, total, absolute trust. As you think of this person, ponder what is it about them that has built this trust in you? Can you name qualities, traits? characteristics? What builds trust? Think of as many descriptive words as you can. And I invite you to open your eyes. As you are comfortable, I would invite you to share some of the words that came to your mind. Were there any words, just popcorn style? And as you share them, I'm going to write them down so that we can see, hear, and feel these words. What words came into your mind? Love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Love. Good. I'm going to actually put that here too. Others. Yes. Honesty. Good. Thank you, Alan. Others. Yes. Genuine. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Genuine. Others. Yes. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency. Yes. Other words. Responsible. Very good. Other words. That builds trust. Supportive. I love that. One of the things I hear in that supportive is also this sense of, you know that they want what is best for you, that they're supportive of you. Um, so they want what's best for you. They have your best interests in heart. They want you to thrive. Others, and even if you shared before, if other words are coming to your mind, John, kindness, yes, that's good. As you're thinking of words, I would also encourage you on how it makes you feel. How do you feel with one for whom you trust? Any words? Caretaker, beautiful, thank you. I'm gonna actually put that down here too. Also a giver, that's great, thank you. Excellent. I would write um, safe, safety. Others? Yeah. Humility. Oh, good word. Thank you. Any other words? Acceptance. Acceptance. And that you and you know that it's it's real authentic. That's great. Thank you. I'm sorry. One more time, a little louder. Consider it. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Consider it. Perfect. 
Any other words? Empathetic. Ooh, yes. That's great. Thank you. I'm going to put that here too, but you can kind of see it. Good. Loyal. Ooh, good. Thank you. Others? Concern? Good. I'm, just like, I'm having a hard time hearing in the back. Can someone say, hmm? Tolerance. Thank you. I can't, I'm having a hard time hearing back there. Thank you. Tolerance. Excellent. Any others that we want to add to this list? Oh, okay, yeah, we definitely have to do forgiveness. Yes. Thank you. That's very good. Forgiveness. So this is a really good list. I think that it hits trust on so many different levels. And I wonder, as we see these words, how it helps us to tell this gospel story from John. Much like what we found in our lesson last week, our story this morning actually opens with Jesus responding to a question that he was asked in chapter 13, when Peter says to Jesus, where are you going? And Jesus says to him in chapter 13, where I am going, you cannot come. But then now he says, but do not let your heart be troubled. And this word troubled is used all throughout scripture to talk about times of heartache, confusion, pain. And then Jesus says, believe in God, believe in me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. Now, when we hear this word believe, we tend to think of it as we might doctrine. Do you believe there is a God? Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? Like an affirmation of faith that we stand up each week, we declare what we believe. And we tend to think of it as we might an experiment searching for evidential proof of God's existence or as Jesus as divinity or divine. You either believe or you don't. But the Greek word for believe is the word pistis. And pistis is also translated as trust. And so in Greek, and even I think a deeper way than English, to believe comes with this added layer of emphatical trust in God. Trust, it is a relational word, demonstrating for the disciples that God is in relationship with humanity. Now, remember, up to this point, they have never seen God. They have not touched, they have not felt. And yet here in Jesus, Jesus is reminding them that through him, God is in relationship with them. And as with all relationships, this means that they must trust. They need to trust Jesus and they need to trust God. That God is present and that even when things get hard and it's about to get really hard for them, that they have to trust that he is there with them. And so perhaps if we understand, believe in this light, then we might hear that line that follows, that beautiful illustration in a little different way of what it means to trust. Now, I know for many, if not all of us, this passage is beloved. It is one that we often read at funerals with this image of coming through the pearly gates and there's this huge mansion of many rooms where Jesus says, I have gone to prepare a place for you. But this dwelling place that Jesus speaks of in this passage, I think is even deeper than that. Because Jesus is not just saying that it is there when we die, but he says, where I am, where I am, there you are also. Meaning now in this life, wherever you are, 
you have a dwelling place in me. Now, this dwelling place, it can mean a physical building, but it can also be translated as a condition or a state of, of being. So what does it mean to find this dwelling place in Jesus? Meaning, yes, certainly we believe after we die, we will be with Jesus. But Jesus is also saying right here, right now, this house of many rooms, this dwelling place is here for I abide with you. As we have seen in some of these words that we have written out, this conveying of a sense of safety, shelter, trust, solid ground. That even when your heart is troubled and you're unsure of where things are going, even when your world gets rocked, trust that God abides in you and you and God. Trust in me. I am your safe place. I am your shelter. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, for generations, Christians have had a way of reading this in a way that is somehow exclusionary. We've added the word only where it does not exist, which has emboldened Christians to read this passage with this lens of Jesus is the only way to that mansion that we find on the other side of the pearly gates. But what the text says is trust in me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, and then goes on to say, very truly, I tell you, the one who believes, trusts in me, will do the works that I do. Will do the works that I do, and in fact, will do even greater works than these. In other words, if you follow the way I have shown you, if you live as I have lived, if you bring life, then imagine the kingdom of God, the dwelling place that we will be for the world, a kingdom in which God's house has a room for everyone, a, a kingdom in which one could experience the presence of God from the trust they have in you that someone can experience the presence of God from the trust, the dwelling place of what they find in you. As you all were sharing these words, I could not help but hear the words popping right out at us, the way you have said that you trust those who walk the walk and talk the talk. You trust those who say something with their words, and then they show in their actions, their kindness, their caretaking, their safety, their humility, their genuine, their consistency, that they do what they say, that they act what they believe the way. You've also demonstrated truth. You said honesty, acceptance, authentic empathetic, loyal, tolerance. These are words that get at the heart of one who is true and genuine. And then down here, we hear life. Right in the beginning of John's gospel, it talks of life abundance that we experience through love, through supportiveness, through the recognition that somebody has your best interests at heart that they have recognized the gifts that you have and how you can bring those gifts to be the kingdom of God. And that in these, what, the way, the truth, and the life, if we can embody this kind of trust, if we can be that safe dwelling place for another, then imagine the kingdom of God that we can bring into the world here and now one that waits, and one that is already among us. But friends, we also hear in this text that Jesus realizes there is a lot at stake when trust is broken. If the disciples lose their trust, their relationship in him, and if others 
lose their trust in them, then imagine the impact that has on the kingdom of God. And recognizing that there is much agency that they have, much responsibility to embody their beliefs, this trust, this kingdom, and how they live with one another. So I'm going to invite you to just close your eyes one more time or enter into a time of reflection as you're comfortable. And to now think of a moment when trust was broken in a relationship. Perhaps it was by you. Maybe it was by another. But think of the circumstances that led to the violation of that trust. Recall the emotions you felt. As you are comfortable, I would invite you to open your eyes. Now, I know this is a little more personal, and I do not want to know the circumstances, but if you would be comfortable sharing some of the words of how you felt during that time, I'd be grateful for you to share them for us. How did you feel when trust was lost? Anger. Thank you. Anger. Disappointment. Thank you. Confusion. Hmm. Others. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Unsafe. When we lose trust, it is personal. It is deep and it is harmful. And Jesus' words to the disciples in our story cautions them to not lose that trust in him and to be mindful of the ways that others, again, might lose it in them. For the way to the Father's house, God's kingdom, is through the way, the truth, and the life. And to recognize that we have this calling to embody that and to bring that. Now, we see a world in which I believe we are hungry for that trust in God, for that trust in others. We are seeing a shift in Christianity, in faith, in church attendance. And I think there's a lot of things behind that, but I can't help but wonder if because there is a generation that has felt that Christians say one thing and yet they do another. Their actions demonstrate something else. We can think of stories of heartache in which those in the church have caused great harm. And what that does, not only to our personal relationships, the hurt, the anger, the fear that we, that we then have with those we're close to, but it also can impact the relationship one has with God and their trust in the church, in the institution. So when we hear this call to be the way, the truth, and the life, it's so much more about where we're going. It's about where we are and the kingdom that God is calling us to be. Now, our text ends with good news, where Jesus says, if you ask me to do anything, I will do it. And I wonder what it would look like for us this morning to actually ask Jesus to help us with trust. Have you ever come to God and said, just help me be that trust? Or perhaps if you have been wounded in a relationship that has somehow harmed your trust in them, perhaps maybe you can lift that up in prayer, recognizing that our wounds need to be healed and that forgiveness abounds and that God shows us every day the way that we can come to God over and over again asking for help. So in your prayers today, in your time of reflection, I would lift up to them, to God, that you are seeking God's presence, God's healing, God's help to be that dwelling place, to follow in the way, the truth, and the life, and to be that trust to one another. What if today we each ask Jesus to help us with the trust to be that sanctuary, that dwelling place of God? Amen.
You may be seated. Please join the statement of faith as we read it responsively. In life and death, we belong to God. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick, binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female of every race and people, to live as one community. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the church. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Friends, today we gather around this table, a table in which we are all invited to be a part of. So come, however you are, come with the burdens you carry, come with the joys and celebration, come with your hearts, come with your hopes, come just as you are. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right in our greatest joy, gracious and loving God, to give you thanks and praise for your works are great and your ways are just and true. Let us pray. O oh, divine creator, at your loving word, all things were made and the beauty of creation was called from chaos. Through your word, you formed us in your image and gave us life. By your word, you called us to love and to serve you and to live in peace with you in all that you have made. O oh, Holy One, in the depths of our grief and confusion, you call out to us saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in me, trust in God. Help us to hear these words, to believe them, to embody them. Help us, O oh God, to be that source of shelter and sanctuary to another that they too may trust in the good of your kingdom from what they witness in us. May our words and actions be the way, the truth, and the life into your loving presence. We know, O oh God, there are prayers that we bring on our hearts this day. As we come seeking to be nourished by your spirit, hear the cries and celebrations of our hearts, the names we bring, the situations for which we need your guiding light. Into the silence, listen as we name either out loud or in the privacy of our hearts, our prayers for you. We pray for Becky, Ember, Rhonda, and Dave. Today we come at Christ's invitation to break bread and share the cup and to proclaim the mystery of our faith. 
Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Gracious and giving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered around your holy table and on these gifts of bread and wine, that we, being nourished by them, may be for the world the body of Christ made strong, made new, and redeemed in your covenant. And now through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in unity with the Holy Spirit, we join our voices together, saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night before Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his friends in that upper room. And there he took bread. He blessed it and broke it. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. For as often as you eat this bread, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, after they had finished eating, he took a cup of wine. And there he blessed it. He said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you. It is the cup of the new covenant. For as often as you drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, the table is set and all is prepared. Let us share in this meal together. Eternal God, we come to you with thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world 
in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. It is now time to receive God's offering. As people of God, let us offer ourselves and our gifts for God's work in the world. to a new wisdom to impart the truth of the gospel. Your people are free. Accept all that we do in the name of Christ who makes all things new.
now, friends, go out into the world in peace to be that dwelling place. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Go this day in the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen.